missing. <laughs> that was excellent. You got to record that. <laughs> Wait. That has a meme. I was just going to say, I can already do <laughs> <picture> a meme. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, well, I've, been, I've been mocked worse. <laughs> oh. Listen, we're not mocking you. That was your no, voice. No, no, no. Turn into a meme. I, I, I just, I've been made worse. Oh, that was great. That was funny. <laughs> I will find that later tonight. Eileen, it's uh, 7. Oh. oh, thank you. Thank you. That's for all of us to read? Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. 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 Councilman Pasola? Here. Councilwoman Crowley? Here. Councilman Kahn? Here. Okay, can I get a motion on Resolution A to go into executive session? I'll second. second. All right. Uh, Councilman Pasola, to go and to close? He, he seconded. Yeah, I, I'm just taking the vote. Oh, you said Councilman Pasola and looked at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Councilman Ramos? <laughs> yes. Councilwoman Testa? Yes. Councilwoman Burns? Yes. Councilman Pasola? Yes. Councilwoman Crowley? Yes. And Councilman Burns? Yes. Hi, Karen.
from March 5th, 2024. I'll make motion. I'll second. Uh, I'm sorry. Can, are so I think I'll second. Okay, someone. Uh, Council, Councilman Ramos? You're really having a problem with my name yeah, tonight. I'm <laughs> sorry, I apologize. Yes. Councilwoman Testa? <coughs> Councilwoman Testa? Yes. Councilwoman Burns? Yes. Councilman Pasola? Yes. Councilwoman Crowley? Yes. Councilman Gant? Yes. Okay, moving on, we have a uh, department head memo, a curb cut reconstruction exemption request for block 162, lot 16. Councilman Ramos, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a quick one. Um, it is uh, located at uh, 419 Arbutus uh, Drive, literally directly right across the street from my home. Um, no additional parking will be get. Basically what we have here is we have a 21 foot wide uh, driveway. Uh, we are going to be starting the uh, road work on our Butis Drive, so uh, it basically um, it slightly exceeds the 16-foot um, uh, normally allowed uh, driveway. It was put in over 20 years ago. Um, the uh, the sidewalk area is very well intact. No no sign of any cracks or distress. Uh, it's a paver driveway. It's been there for 20 years. Um, uh, Borough engineer John Mealy uh, said that the, there would be no additional parking would be gained by reducing it to the 16 foot. Um, the existing driveway is frequently fully occupied and the existing curb and driveway apron in this area is not in need of repair and is in very good condition. Um, so based on that review, he has no objection for granting the property owner's request. So with that being said and the fact that there is no real parking issue on our Butis Drive, um, it's his recommendation, it would be my recommendation that the council approve it. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah, I, I also looked at it and uh, I have no problem with it at all. So next we need a motion to add it to the agenda. Yep. Can I get a motion to add it? <coughs> I'd make that motion. I'll second it. <coughs> Councilman Ramos? Yes. Councilwoman Testa? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Pasola? Yes. Councilwoman Crowley? Yes. Councilman Gant? Yes. And that will be added to E. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Ramos. While you have the floor, you can start us off with our uh, committee report. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay, I would like to start, um, and I, I see uh, Councilman Cortez is in the audience, and this was his baby, so uh, 
Uh, Councilman Cortez, I didn't really do it justice. I did miss last month, so I'm going to actually catch up on two months now. Um, we have our anniversaries for our employees. Um, for the month of, I'm going to redo December because I only remembered one person because I forgot the list. So, Chief, you're going to get a second round of accolades. Um, uh, for uh, a 29 year anniversary for our police department, Peter uh, Andreev. Andre, 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 Andre. Andreev? Andreev. Andreev, okay. Uh, 29 years. Uh, we have uh, uh, Chief Kowaleski, uh, 20 years. Uh, Andy Meany, 20 years from our police department. We have uh, Chris Mosca, uh, police department, 20 years. Uh, Joseph uh, Gepetti uh, from our police department, 19 years. Got some good longevity there, Chief. Um, and for the month of March, we have uh, for public works, Kenneth, Kenneth Napalo. Uh, for uh, 23 years. Also from Public Works, we have John Flynn celebrating 23 years. Uh, we have uh, Pascal Drew from our Police Department, 19 years. Uh, we have Scott Nace from our Police Department, 17 years. We have uh, Bill Pop uh, from Public Works, 13 years. Uh, Ida Brown uh, uh, from our Water Department, 11 years. Uh, for the um, uh, Dispatch, uh, Ryan uh, Karn. Uh, is five years. Um, I should have brought my glasses, this is tiny print. For the police department, uh, Corey McCormick uh, celebrating three years. And that is it. So, congratulations. <laughs> um, for the environmental green team, I really don't have anything to report. The green team is uh, accumulating uh, points towards sustainable New Jersey, and they're here. They are still focusing on that silver designation, and it's going really well. So kudos to them. Uh, the open space committee uh, actually met last night. They're putting the finishing touches on uh, pr putting together for April second. All right, April second, we said. Uh, Councilwoman Testa was in attendance as well. Um, they are putting the finishing touches together on a formal presentation that they will do at the next council meeting um, regarding the uh, potential of acquiring waterfront property in the Channel Drive area for open space recreational purposes for future generations to enjoy, such as dog parks, walking trails, exercise station, fishing spots, kayak launches, and things of that nature. Um, and uh, they will be, as I said, also requesting that the mayor and council explore funding opportunities such as Green Acres, Blue Acres, uh, state and Ocean County grants to fund a, a, a good percentage of the cost. Uh, with the Shade Tree Commission, uh, just a reminder, we still have a big beautiful tree program for 2024 that's still out there, so that's still a possibility. Um, also, we are still looking for if anyone is interested in a free street tree. Um, we so far have awarded actually 11 of them. Um, and more to come, and we are targeting certain properties in town, so some folks may be getting uh, reached out to. Um, that's all I have on my um, committees. I do have a transparency report that I would like to speak about this evening. Um, and um, Point Pleasant Beach is again making headlines, this time for anti-Semitic insults between a council member and a neighbor that were recorded and investigated by our police and prosecutor's office and deemed to be a bias incident. When does this craziness end? We sit here three months into a new year and administration, and every meeting there is another new st stain on Point Pleasant Beach. Councils removing volunteers from committees for talking bad about them. Councils removing me from my committees for political retribution. Sitting council people having serious open violations with building and code enforcement and still serving on committees and voting with conflicts of interest. Residents getting upset and removed or arrested from council chambers. Council members, council member taunting and threatening residents after meetings. Council member having ongoing issues with multiple neighbors involving the police on several occasions that have spilled into this chamber. This most recent issue is, in my opinion, the most egregious and indefensible one of all. Anti-Semitism has no place in our society, has no place in Point Pleasant Beach, and absolutely no place on this dais. 
the spotlight that this council has placed on itself from all these prior issues I just mentioned is now shining full force on this council tonight. I hope that this council takes this matter very seriously. This kind of behavior cannot stand. It is not okay. There is no excuse for it. Serious action needs to be taken tonight. Everyone is watching the response of this council tonight very closely. The message we deliver cannot be that we are tolerant of this kind of behavior. We need to do what's best for the residents of this town, and we need to handle business accordingly. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Ramos. Uh, Councilwoman Testa. Um, thank you, Mayor. Welcome, everyone. Um, I will start off with the building uh, department <coughs> report. Um, we have 128 building permits. Uh, the fees collected are $58,064. We have 210 rental applications. Uh, we've collected $61,500 in fees. Uh, the fire inspector, uh, Brian, has performed 102 fire inspections and fees collected have been $21,579. And for the business registration, um, there are 378 and fees collected are $61,912. I would like to take a moment to recognize the building and engineering department. Several residents this past week have sent out some really beautiful um, emails um, ex expressing their experiences with the building department and I just wanted to say thank you um, to that because they talked about their professionalism, their accessibility, how efficient they were and what a great experience they had. So it's always nice to be recognized for doing great <coughs> things. So thank you to our building department for all you do for our residents. Um, they do appreciate you. So I just wanted to um, recognize that. Next, I will talk about Municipal Alliance Committee. Um, I am the liaison, and Kristen O'Rourke and I work together on that. And we, um, the committee plans and hopes to have approval on the next agenda for what I'm going to be talking about right now. So we um, are going to be sponsoring the bike rodeo on May 11th with the police department. Uh, we will be providing our children with a great program and with a lot of little great gifts to give out to them that day of the bike rodeo, so we're excited about that. Kristen and myself attended Antrim PTO meeting um, this, this month, which was fun because it was nice to be back there sitting there in my own stomping ground, and it is amazing um, just the wonderful work, you know, parents that give back. It was a full house, and uh, the principal was there, so it was really nice. It brought back great memories. Uh, we are happy to announce that uh, we will sponsor the end of year assembly with you lead. They do that right now at the beginning of the school year and they said that they really would love if we could help them close out the year to kind of go back and just reinforce everything that the children were learning at the beginning which I think is excellent so um, we were able to do that for them so we will be sponsoring that program. Also uh, we will also be doing uh, the project graduation, which we do every year for our high school students though, when they graduate so they have a safe place to go to. Uh, we will also be sponsoring a high school guest speaker to be announced. Um, they'll let us know who they want. Uh, there's a lot of great ones out there, so I will let you know who that will be. And um, lastly, we are also excited to send six students again this year to the 2025 Elks Peer Leadership Program, which went last year. It was a huge success. and. Um, We've, I've been invited to both things, so if I can, I'm really going to try to go this year to uh, be there and just sit back and, and look. So uh, the Municipal Alliance is doing great things, so we're always welcoming um, <coughs> residents and parents. If you want to get involved, we would love to have you. Uh, next, uh, the arts. Uh, just real quick, don't forget to purchase your tickets for our biggest fundraiser, Party by the Sea, on May 30th from 630 to at the Point Lobster Shanty. Ticket prices are $55 if purchased before April 1st. After April 1st, they're $65. Um, also, want to give a big shout out to our decorating committee. If you notice on Bay Avenue next to Bam Bam, the tree is decorated for St. Patty's. Um, they do a great job, and they'll be doing that for spring and some little decorations in the planter. So, thank you for our decorating committee. And also, I know spring is in the air. Will we be putting up our spring banners soon? Yes. Awesome. And let me see. 
I think that's really all I have. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Burns. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Happy first evening of spring. Um, so I guess um, a report on the Golden Goals had a, um, a wonderful luncheon last Tuesday. And we had about, I guess we had about 75 people, and many, well, most, were residents of town. And I know that had been a little bit of a concern that there were so many that were out of town. But we, we didn't charge our residents this time. This was on the first time that we had to charge our residents a $5 admission. And so the, the residents came in for free, and the out-of-towners paid the $5, and we only collected $100. So most of the people in the room were all residents, and that was, you know, that was pretty nice. Uh, we were able to provide a complimentary lunch. We had live music from our local talented Lori Tomlinson, whose dad is a resident and a regular of the Point Pleasant Beach Gold event, so that was really kind of darling. Um, we had a bagpiper surprise us, and um, we had delicious corned beef that we served. The, um, last night, we, the um, Golden Gulls met, and the, although the committee is a little smaller, we had plenty of volunteers at the, um, at the luncheon, and um, we had our Gold Buddies from Point Pleasant Beach, the students come and help us serve and break down, and um, we had a wonderful day. Um, also last night, um, at the Golden Goals meeting, we had a representative from Mattisquam Bank to speak to us about um, <coughs> coming and hosting a consumer board event. So, um, you know, that'll be coming in late April. Um, we'll be planning another guided paint session, probably around Mother's Day or so, just like the last couple, two seasons that we've done that. And then um, Cousin Brucey and the Garden State Arts Foundation has invited me to invite our Golden Goals again to be VIP guests at the PNC Art Center for that special show. And that is um, late May in that calendar. The last time that we went, we had um, two bus bowls filled with seniors, but it was the night of the um, Canada Fire, so the concert was canceled. So when we tried to get as much enthusiasm for the second time that it was rescheduled, um, we did. But we had a bus full, we met in the, in the parking lot, um, Christine and the chief had waived the fees for the, for the parking for the seniors, and we went out to PNC, and we were treated to, um, we were courting off to VIP seats, and then Country <coughs> Brucey announced the Point Pleasant Beach Golden Dolls. I mean, it was really, it was a wonderful night for our seniors, and all of us, all of us involved. Um, so, that, so we'll have that coming up the pike, too. Of course, we meet every Tuesday morning for chair yoga and Zumba, and that was, you know, well attended again this morning. Um, our first aid has asked us to spread the word and um, increase the participation for their Egg My, Egg My Yard <laughs> fundraiser. Um, we did this last year, and it couldn't have been more charming for our lovely little town. I mean, it just actually, just a couple weekends ago, um, we enjoyed, there was a uh, tickets to the aquarium in there. So it's like you call the firemen and get just a small donation, really, and they'll come and drop off 50 uh, eggs for Easter, and they're all stuffed with something and ready to go. Really, really don't need. But they're asking for a little more support. So if you were so inclined, they would love to have the order. And then um, just late and a little bit ago, uh, I was forwarded from our captain from the first aid that um, <coughs> she just wanted to give me some of the end of the year stats. Their year ends January 31st. So um, the, the, they responded to 1,473 calls this year. And the, man, the manpower hours for, for the special response teams is the equivalent of 3.7 members on duty, 24-7, 365 days a year. So we are really grateful for our first responders and our fire department, of course, who luckily have nothing to report on tonight. So we're all happy about that. And um, let's see. Thank you. Councilman Pasola. Hey, uh, Councilwoman Testa brought up uh, a few letters pertaining to the building department, uh, and that's great to hear. I see two people out here that play a big part in the success of the building department and the zoning and building, Brian Martin and Kristen Cuncombe. They do a wonderful job for our town, and I'm very proud uh, of the job they do. Um, Mayor, I continue to get a lot of requests to bring the cameras back, the zone, the, uh, you know, people could watch it from home and so on. People are extremely disappointed. We're being videoed anyway. Uh, but I, I, I would just like to see it come back. I, I continue. There's elderly people calling me that can't come out and they miss it. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion that we bring it back as it was in the beginning. And I will 
second that. Yeah, I was just going to second I will that. second that motion. Yeah. Just to be clear, the motion is to bring back the video. The live show, audio, audio and video. Yes. I guess, is there some discussion on how it would be, um, you know, just at the, at dispersed? The, so that the does it have to be live stream or on YouTube or like is there? Like it was. It, it, should, be, it should be live stream. If we're going to bring it back, it should be live stream live so stream. people could, could watch it at right. home. I would just ask you just uh, clarify the motion to what exact because I think you said to bring it back to what it was. So uh, I yeah. just want to make it more affirmative. So a motion to like, like reinstate the live stream of the meeting, the something like that. Yeah, to live stream the, the meeting with video and audio. Yeah, that works. Okay. Councilman Ramos. Absolutely yes. Councilman Testa. Yes. Councilman Burns. Yes. Councilman Casola. Yes. Yes. Okay, our, our police department, uh, Sergeant Drew and Sergeant Bertolotta conducted mandated canine training. So that's good to hear. Officer Benitez and Levine, probably not pronouncing the names properly, but it's right in back, so you can close. <laughs> I'm close. Levin. Attended an advanced patrol tactics course, which covered making approaches to vehicles buildings, and people. It also covered case law pertaining to traffic stops, nighttime patrol tactics, and many other important safety topics. So as you can see, our department is going to be, an, well, not going to be, it is, very, very well trained. And, and I'm proud of the chief, the job he's doing, and all of our officers. Uh, community uh, situations. The paid parking has going back in effective March 1st, and it became effective March and May. It will become effective May 15th in the Little Silver parking lot. Is that correct, Kid? Uh, the train station. Train station. Train station. Train station. <coughs> uh, save the date for the Point Beach bike bash, which is a bike safety radio for all Point Beach residents, grades K to not to eight, as well as St. Peter's students. This free event will be held on Saturday, May 11th, from 11 to 3, in the Little Silver parking lot. We will have bike safety information, bike skills course, bike repair, BMX demonstration. I'm going to go because they're going to have food, ice cream, and prizes. So if you want food, ice cream, and prizes, show up. The first aid's going to be there, and so on, so it's going to be very, very good. Um, officer... Benitez and Detective Lutshaw are certified car safe safety technicians. So if you have seats for your kids and so on and you're question whether they're installed properly and you'd like to uh, meet with them, you can call headquarters at any time. They will set up an appointment and uh, make just to make sure that your children are safe in their seats. I think that's very important. I agree with uh, Michael... Councilman Ramos, uh, with what he said, our little beautiful town continues to get ripped apart. We're making horrible headlines. We're the laughing stock of Ocean County. I continually hear it. I took this seat purposely thinking I would be able to end this nonsense, but it gets worse every day. There's one thing continually, never stops. Uh, we have a horrible situation now where we had a councilwoman that was deemed by the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office and our police department as committing a biased incident. This cannot continue. It's horrible for Point Pleasant Beach, and, and it just has to stop. I can't stand the fact. I've been involved in politics in this town for over 50 years, never, ever had situations like this. Our Borough Hall, we have, we have two women here that are doing a great job in our, in our Borough Hall. We're trying to correct some problems. We run into roadblock after roadblock. It has to stop. We have to make things better. We have to run the town better than we are. A few of us are trying desperately. But again, we run into roadblock after roadblock. And, and like I said, some of the employees and two of these women right here are two of them that are doing a fabulous job. So I just wanted to get that across. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Council President Crowley. Um, on the Golden Goals Fund, St. Patty's event was a wonderful event. Thank you to all the uh, volunteers who participated, and thank you, Councilman, Councilwoman Burns, for uh, steering it all. Uh, Gold Buddies participation in it was a great hit. I know we had our seniors meeting last night, and we discussed having them involved in more meetings. They're going to come to help out also to try to get some classes for our seniors for internet and social stuff. So teach some people that may not have much computer usage some classes. Um, on the finance committee, we have budget workshops that are ongoing. Um, on the school board, I will recap the last uh, report I had. There is nothing new, but I will read it back out for those who may not have heard it. So, one second. So, Mrs. Stracchini achieved tenure as a supervisor of elementary curriculum and instruction. Ninth grader Landon Hoverman received a 2020, 2024 Excellence in Education Single Use <coughs> Plastic Award through New Jersey Clean Communities. Sixth grade STEM students coded Lego spike vehicles to navigate a maze. Antrim's Green Garden is harvesting basil. All signs indicate that the high school may have won another NJEA sustainable, sustainable Jersey grant. Final information will um, be given late March. Middle States committee members met virtually recently to discuss self-assessments by the subcommittees for each standard. The high school held an AED cardiac arrest drill AP seminar students presented their research projects to an audience of faculty and peers and responded to questions posed to them. Alana Van Vogt was named the high school upstander of the week. And that's all for my reports, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Rosa. Councilman Gant. Good evening, everybody. Uh, DPW front, status quo. That's what they uh, advised me. But they did install the lights over at Pleasure Park. I'm not sure if anybody knows that the lights are over there. And they're still gearing up for the uh, summer, replacing things around town. Um, as far as recreation, um, they have an Easter egg hunt coming up this Saturday from 12 to 1. <coughs> um, they still have some spots open. And a just a reminder that it's uh, open to residents as well for children. Um, and it's free. Um, there's also going to be Easter egg hunts uh, by age range and then new this year they're going to do a, a spring hat parade contest so they're encouraging adults and children so if adults want to get some hats out throw them on to uh, for a hat wearing contest bring your most decorative hat and creative hats to represent the springtime and join their uh, parade for prizes um, they're also going to be posting uh, for summer camp counselors in the next uh, couple weeks applicants have to be 18 years or older so if you want to uh, help out with the summer camp, by all means. The spring skateboarding lessons are coming up as well. There's one spot left as of today. Uh, I'm not sure if that's been filled already or not, but if you're looking to get your child in, there's one spot left. The next recreation meeting is next Monday at 6.30 p.m. Um, and we're still looking for volunteers, and we have some things going on. Um, that's pretty much all I have. We're trying to do our best. Right? I know there's some discrepancies. We're working at it. We're working on it. Um, could I add something to, that's what I have for my report. Can I add something to the agenda, please? Or do you want me to wait until after? You have to uh, make a motion for that, right? Yeah, you, you have a motion. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to add a town hall meeting on April 23rd. Just so the council knows, he did reach out to me first, so that date works. Well, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Yes. Councilwoman Chester? Yes. Councilwoman Burns? Yes. Councilman Pasola? Yes. Councilwoman Crowley? Yes. Councilman Camp? Yes. Right, that would be item 2F on the agenda. And also on item 1H, there's five, uh, there's five items listed. Can I table three of them? Uh, yeah. Uh, hold on, real quick, before we do that, though. 
Hold on. Before we do that, though, I'm going to ask uh, Council President Crowley and Council McGann to recuse themselves from 1H. Uh, because there's two building department uh, individuals on here who uh, are actively uh, involved in violations uh, for both Council President Crowley and Councilman Gann. I do not have any violations. Uh, they are both working uh, on your case, or they've been involved. So it's a conflict of interest, so I'm asking them to recuse themselves. Okay. I thought the attorney said we put a motion on this. Uh, it's, a, it's a personnel issue. Um, I, we've been, I, I think it's advisable that, that it's all tabled today. Um, obviously that's up to the council's discretion, but, um, yeah, given the advice we've had with our, the, the Burroughs Labor Council, um, I would say it's advisable that these are, these are tabled, but for the conflict, I can, I go, how you want to handle that, but that's the first part. So, so I think we, I think we go forward with yeah. the, with the vote. I mean, we've had a personnel committee, we talked about all of this, um, so I think. Well, I mean, why we, we we were advised by our borough attorney to table this. This has been going on a long time. We've had conversations and, and, and this I afternoon. Believe if, if, that if I, Christine Real was even. Doug, I only want to table. I want to table one H two, one H three, and one H five. That's the ones I want to table. If you want to look at them and see what they are. If we were advised by I only see. Would that be what we should do? Yeah. The. the there was, as our understanding, there was no, this is, a, this is a personnel issue, there were no race notices that we wanted to make sure this was done in a proper way, in a proper discussion. So. A couple of these voted on separately. Um, yes. I, I, if I make a motion. I mean, you, mu you might want to have to, make, yeah. Uh, so you're talking about doing one or the other? All right, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we promote Christine Truncombe to the position and I, of zoning officer. And I will second that. I, I would just... Uh, is that you're going off of what resolution 1H is correct, right. but you're just doing one by can one. Can we just, do, I mean, I think we just do the whole thing, right? I mean, I don't want to separate <coughs> out. He, he, wants, he, he wants some of them for I just want to table 1H2, 1H3, 1H5. I don't know, what, where is it, 1H2, 3? On the back. Yeah. Oh. On the back of the, of the here. I can advise The consent yeah. resolution. Oh, okay, got it. I don't if he if he has to recuse himself for a conflict can he make a motion to do that so if, if if you're asking me to give legal advice on a conflict, I we usually do that. Hold on, guys. I would usually do that in private with the person, uh, just because. I was notified that uh, Mike Collins notified both those individuals prior to the meeting. Uh, I was not well, notified. I I don't know if he. I don't know. I not, I wasn't privy to those discussions, but um, it's the elected officials' responsibility to recuse themselves if they feel there is a conflict. Uh, the attorney's advice is just that. It's advice, but like I said, I wouldn't. Uh, I would, I would talk to the person in private or the people in private first uh, to go over any conflict before I would feel comfortable giving a, a legal opinion. Okay. Way. So, uh, Council President Crowley and Council McGann, would you recuse yourself due to a conflict of interest? No, I, I don't think I have a conflict of interest. What if we don't feel that we're, are, we're judging anything incorrectly? So okay, so I, I'm asking you if you'll recuse yourself. Yes? I, I don't think my vote... I made, I made a motion. So, and I'll need second. I'll need second. What was, I'm sorry. I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to table 1H-2. Well, hold on. We have a motion on the table. We have one motion on the table right now. And Councilman Pissola. We'll can we add 1H1 to that, please? We'll get to that. Okay, so it's. Um, this is this is to promote Christine Truncombe to the position of zoning officer. Well, there is a motion for I think it was yeah, one specific yeah. person. Okay, so I would. You, you have, that's on the table. You need to you need to vote on that one, and then you can. Okay. Do well, he wanted two people. So say, say your motion with those he two. He wanted people out. But but you have the motion. So say who you want. I want to promote Kristen Troncone. Okay. To the position of zoning officer. And then. I need second. Which and and Brian Martin, 
pertaining to the monies that are owed here. So you're talking about uh, items 1H4 and 1H5. 1H4 pertains to Kristen Tronco and 1H5 pertains to Brian Martin. Yes. yes. Okay, so the motion should be to approve resolutions 1H4 and 1H5. Yes. Perfect. Although we were advised to fault at all, right? So we're going against the advice of the attorney. No need. Okay. That's what I'm saying. We got a memo today. To well, I second it for Tristan Tracone. I'm not seconding it for 1H5. I would like to carve that out as I'll well. I'll second it for both. Right. There you go. There we, we go. Have, we have a second. Councilman Ramos. Yes. What's the motion on the floor? It's for to approve resolutions 1H4 and 1H5. I am yes to 1H4 and I am no to 1H5. And no to one each five. Um, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think you can split it that way. I think you're voting. Well, then I'm going to say no, and then I'm going to make a motion to put it back on one each four to vote her in. If I can get a second after this well, vote. Well, yeah, let's do the, the right. This that's fine. Call. That's fine. Uh, Councilwoman Burns. Well, then it's a, it's a right now. It's a no for me. Councilman Pasola. Yes. No. So no, I'm going to make a motion to appro approve uh, 1H4. And can you please add 1H1 to that as well? I'll and 1H1. Don't add 1H1. Okay. Why don't we? <laughs> so well, uh, I think we should do it. I mean, it sounds like there's there's separate discussions for each one. So I think just to keep it efficient, maybe we just do it one by one. Yes. So and then you can that way you can. That's what we were trying to do. Yeah. That's what That's we were what trying, trying to do. So Yes. I believe Council we were trying to do that. motion is for 1H4. Yes. To approve 1H4. Yes. That's what we That's tried, tried to, to do. do that. uh, tried That's to what we tried to I do. I apologize. <laughs> All right. I believe there's a motion in there. I made a motion. Councilman Ramos. Yes. <clears throat> Councilwoman Testa. Yes. Councilwoman Burns. And now this is the 1H1. This is for no, 1H4. 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 Yes. yes. Councilman Pasola. Yes. Councilwoman Crowley. Yes. Councilman Gant. Yes. Can I make a motion to approve 1H 1? I will make a motion to approve 1H 1 1. A. <laughs> so we're going right from the top, working our way down. Okay, there's a 1H1, there's 1H dash 1A and a 1H dash 1B. So I would just clarify, it's 1H dash 1A is what you're talking about, correct? I don't have an A and B. I have a one. I have. There's an A and B on the new one on the new agenda. The revise. The revise. Yeah, A and B. Please, please A and B. 1H-1A and 1B. Okay. I, I don't think it's ridiculous. I don't think it's ridiculous. I think that this council wants to have further discussion, and we have a right to do that. We asked to do that, so now we have to go individually one by one. Okay. So let's, let's continue Thank on. you. Okay. So the motion is for 1H-1A and 1H-1B to approve those resolutions. Yes, please. Okay. I believe Councilwoman Testa seconded. Yes, I okay. did. And then, Councilman Ramos. Yes. Councilwoman Tessa. Yes. Councilwoman Burns. 1H1 again, correct now? 1H1 yes. again. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Councilman Pasola. Yes. Councilwoman Crowley. Yes. Councilman Gant. Yes. And I'd like to make a motion to table 1H2, 1H3, and 1H5. And I will second that. Yes. Councilman Ramos. No. Councilwoman Testa. Yes. Councilwoman Burns. Yes. Councilman Pasola. No. Councilwoman Crowley. Yes. Councilman Gant. 
Councilman Gant. Yes. So we have four yeses, so this, uh, those items are tabled. Tabled to the next meeting. I would suggest that the council, uh, this has been going on a long time, do their homework. Uh, there's people that were denied tonight that, that have been waiting a long time. Do your homework, ask your questions so that we can get these things passed and the people, the employees, get what they deserve. That is the goal. Absolutely. That is, and we did that do our homework. That is our goal, and we have yes. been doing our due diligence. Yes, we have. And talking to yes. a lot of residents. And what we want to do, and just pause this a little bit, and just get it right. We want the building department to be right. We want it all to be right. Well, that's what it is. We don't want burdens for our residents. None of us here do. Well, I could say a lot of things aren't right, and they haven't been right the last few years. So. certain members to do their homework, get to that borough hall regularly, and, and meet with people, and do department heads, ask questions. You had a meeting, you had a personnel meeting uh, with Christine Real, our administrator. A lot of questions asked. Some of these things should have passed because everybody was in agreement at that meeting. Right, and so, so that would be- do, do your homework. Right. These are the people out here you've got to work for. Okay, uh, Council again, like, are you done? Like I am done. Just right add, please, to um, Roy and Martin. I think that you are um, top shelf, and so this has nothing to do with your performance or anything like that at all. I just wanted to put the pause on it. Yeah, Brian, you're doing a great job. Okay, all right, so some questions. Yes, yeah, we can't really talk personnel matters. Okay, there are other departments that we discussed that need to be added on, and this is why we have to revisit it all. Okay. To be fair to everybody. Like I said, it's been going on a long time. All right. Well, I'm new to the personnel committee, so it has to be going you know, long listen, for me. You can visit anybody. I'm chairman of the police committee. I could go over to meet with John Trout. I can go upstairs meet with the, the building inspector. You can, you can go anywhere retired. meet with anybody no, and talk. No, I know, Council. And talk. So, but you might have more time available at certain times of the year than us. Exactly. Uh, and I and I work and I make I phone calls you and I and I just. Email too. Well, I well, listen. I'm right, going to get into debate, but no. But if we're going to if we're going to be put down like that, we should be able to defend ourselves. Do your research and ask. We the do our research. We do our research. Okay. We do our research. Do we do our research? I'm going to do. I'm going to do my report. Insulting. Uh, so first, Council Pesora, I want to thank. Are we done, guys? Oh, we're done. We're done. Uh, it's my turn. Uh, thank you for bringing up the video. Uh, when it was my idea last meeting, it got voted down. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> okay, I, mean, I take it personally, but whatever. Uh, also, just note that um, I had the DCA, the Division of Consumer Affairs Ethics Division, on standby. Um, I will be calling them tomorrow to file ethics complaints against both Council President Crowley and Councilman Gant for voting on a clear conflict of interest. So just let everyone know that. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, I am holding a meeting with all the beach owners uh, and other town officials. So Christine Rio, Councilman Gant, Councilwoman Burns, uh, and others, the chief as well. Uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about cooler size. We're going to be talking about the beach curfew. And we're going to talk about beach access. So I'll report on that meeting uh, at our next council meeting. Uh, as I work, up, uh, work to build up my mayor's wellness campaign, I know Council President Crowley touched on this. Um, I will be holding an IT day with the Golden Goals uh, at the high school. Um, it's going to take place on May 21st from 12 to 3. Uh, and essentially, uh, the senior citizens could come in and get paired up with a uh, high school student who will teach them everything from iPhone usage to Excel to how to log into their Mac to anything they want to know about. So I think it's a great opportunity. We've been trying to do that for a few years with uh, the senior committee. So. Uh, I'm going to put that as uh, my mayor's wellness, so uh, that'll be a great event. Uh, we're continuing to work on the app, the My Downtown mobile app. Uh, it's going through a complete revamp, including all the artwork and logos. Uh, we're working on refreshing list of businesses for the directory, as well as the downtown and boardwalk areas. Uh, and we're still waiting for the Ocean County Tourism Grant <laughs> announcement to come in. Uh, we're soliciting new partners for the health fair, which is going to take place uh, April. Uh, we're meeting with uh, Ocean Monmouth Health Alliance next week, so hopefully we'll get some people to sign on to that. The quarterly newsletter, uh, it's not going to be uh, what you're used to. 
it's going to be way pared down, uh, and it's going to be in the water bill. So I'm uh, putting one in for the water bill uh, in June, so I'll be working on that the next few weeks. Uh, paying attention to the offshore wind and public comment opportunities, uh, I submitted some comments for the New York Bite Draft Pragmatic Environment, Environmental Impact. Uh, I have some comments going out to NJBPU, Atlantic Shores, and Atlantic Shores North. Uh, the Historic Preservation Committee will be presenting the historical building plaque to the Coast Guard Station on April 3rd at 4 p.m. So I think that'll be kind of cool because the plaque has the QR code so you can scan and learn all about uh, not only the uh, Coast Guard Station but the other plaques we gave out already. Uh, the Animal Welfare Committee uh, is going to hold their fundraiser May 18th from 6 to 10 at the boatyard. And uh, my quick library report. Uh, there's three adult programs going on this month, knitting and crocheting at the beach, uh, March 25th at 1 p.m. Uh, all skill levels invited. Uh, you could reach out and call them or email them. Uh, March 25th at 7 p.m., they have an evening book discussion. Uh, the book is In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. And they have an English con uh, conversation group on Monday, March 25th at 7.30 p.m., uh, where non-native non English speakers can practice conversational English. Again, you could reach out to them, uh, either call them or email them. Uh, I know that there's been some, um, some mention of this by both Councilman Ramos and uh, Councilman Pasola, but I also want to talk about the uh, anti-Semitic bias incident uh, that affected our town and our governing body. So a resident who unfortunately cannot be here tonight uh, sent an email to the Mayor and Council uh, and asked me to read it into the record, so I will do that. Um, my name is Lauren Goldfarb Edwards. I reside at 339 River Avenue. I respectfully submit the following statement to be read during public comments. I unfortunately have a conflict and cannot attend the meeting in person. Council President Rosa Crowley, I ask you without anger, but with deep sadness, to step aside and resign from our council. As a concerned resident of Point Beach and a member of the Jewish faith, I can no longer sit quietly by. History has taught us that if we don't confront bigotry head on, if we don't shine a light on wrongdoing and hate, those who stay silent or worse defend the actions become complicit in the bias and the behavior. This is not a red versus blue issue, a Republican versus Democrat issue, but a common decency issue. Hate of any kind has no place here. I ask Council President Crowley to step aside and resign from our town council. Your words reflect your deep-rooted beliefs. You should be ashamed and embarrassed by your recorded comments. There is no denying your use of anti-Semitic re rhetoric. Your comments have been validated by the Point Pleasant Beach Police Department, by a Spanish-speaking interpreter, and by the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office as a bias incident. It is time to do the right thing and show your children, <coughs> your family, and the greater community that you'll do right by all of us. Resign. You have brought immense shame upon all of us, of every faith, and of all backgrounds. Show us you know better. Resign. A strong community is the sum of its parts. You must resign for the good of the future of our township. Respectfully, Lauren Goldfarb Edwards. There was a response to that from Councilwoman Crowley. Do you want me to read that response or no? You can. Well, I don't have the full thing, so. I can read it. Uh, actually, I have it on my phone, so I'll read that, res your response. Uh, give me one second to pull it up. Okay. Councilwoman Crowley responded by saying, Dear Lauren Goldfarb Edwards, I'm sorry you feel that way and choose to believe a statement I did not make. I stand by my statement, which I made the last council meeting. My ongoing issues with my neighbor, who has harassed me for a long time, plays no role in my being on council. The council has no place to judge me for an action I'm accused of outside the capacity of a councilwoman. I was taunted in my native language and discriminated as a Spaniard and was told, Mira, Mira, and I yelled back, Mira, you. That is the truth, and all those who truly know me know that's the truth. Sadly, you chose to judge me, that's on you. Have you seen all the footage of my ring camera and have you read the portion of my side of the incident and my video footage? Probably not. This is all a political attack on me and nothing new. It's been ongoing for over a year. The harassment I have endured as a woman is a disgrace. And that fact that you know me and have witnessed all this and stand for it too is disheartening to say the least. 
We have many mutual friends who can attest to my morals. Maybe politics is playing a role in your decision. I have many great Jewish friends who I respect wholeheartedly, but not because of their religion or race, but for who they are. I also submitted footage of this neighbor taunting me, following me all day upon this moving out of his home on his last day. In the ring video, he says, did you call me a Jew? And I adamantly said, I said you. Stop trying to twist my words. It is, it's a disgrace what he has done to me, and to allow this to play into politics is outright wrong. Regards, Rosa Crowley. To which Lauren Goldfarb Edwards responded, Councilman Crowley, unfortunately, once you put yourself in the public domain, all of your actions and behaviors are a reflection of your elected position, the town and public you represent. We, will, we all represent the companies we work for and the boards we sit on, and any actions we take are a reflection on these organizations. The entire situation has become a blight, a cancer in Point Beach, and the situation needs to be resolved for the good of the township and our future success. These are exactly the reasons you should be resi resigning, not digging into your story and coming back at me the way you did. Politics has zero to do with my hurt, my words, or my actions. Anti-Semitism is not party specific. I have friends throughout the highest levels of political office in New Jersey and across the aisles, and a family member who was elected to the House of Representatives and served for many terms. This isn't a political issue. This is a human decency issue. My boundary has been crossed, and I will not stand by and be complicit. As I said in my previous email, it is with sadness that I ask you to step down. I've spent my life and my career building women up, supporting women, protecting women, and mentoring the next generation of female leaders. Be a role model and show young, woman how, young women how it is done. I am not attacking you or yelling at you. I am asking you with a heavy heart, woman to woman, as a resident, a leader, resign and let the town move on. Thank you, Lauren Goldfarb Edwards. <clears throat> so I have the police report in front of me here. Um, it was posted on social media. Many of you have access to it. Uh, but I want to highlight a few things here. Uh, and I'm leaving the officer's names out. Again, it's in the report. But uh, the video provided uh, by the neighbor uh, to uh, Sergeant as well as to this detective displayed both Kaplan and Crowley on their respective porches and arguing with each other. The audio of the eight-second video clip begins with Crowley speaking Spanish. Crowley, mira, Spanish word. Kaplan, yeah, mira. Crowley, Jew. Kaplan, would, would, would you just say? Crowley, Judio. Sorry for my pr pronunciation. Spanish word. Kaplan, Jew. Crowley, no you. Kaplan, oh no, I heard you say Jew. That's the end of the dialogue in the eight-second video. The police department and the detective who filled out the report enlisted, or investigated enlisted the assistance of an officer who speaks fluent Spanish. They reviewed the footage and confirmed the first Spanish word spoken by Crowley to be Mira, which translates as look. Additionally, they found that the second Spanish word spoken by Crowley was Judio, which translates as Jew. It should be noted that this video was, was reviewed by these officers at both full speed as well as half speed audio playback for accuracy. They also then went to the senior assistant prosecutor and briefly reviewed the incident. They advised once all the reports were completed, they should be forwarded to the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office for their review, in which the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office Bias Crime Unit reported that their office reviewed the incident and determined that this matter was a bias incident. It didn't rise up to the level of the bias crime. Councilwoman Crowley, you are a stain to this administration and to this, this town. I am again going to ask you to please resign your position as council president and councilwoman. I don't believe I'm staying to this council. I've been on here for over two years, and I've never been attacked until you became mayor. So the answer is no, I'm not going to resign. No, I did not make racial comments. I stand firm on the statement I made at the last council meeting. I did not make a racial comment. This is just a political attack on my I, I just asked yes or no, so. I'm speaking. Uh, it's I my turn. I have the floor, you so I'm speaking. Ask me a question. I asked yes or no. I didn't with ask for my, With my response, I have a right to respond. You well, you could get into it after I'm done with my no. report. Yes, I am the mayor. And you just asked me a question. Councilwoman, Cr an Councilwoman Crowley, I will continue my report. So I will be asking for some motions from the council. Before you vote on these motions, I want you to think long and hard what your answers are going to be. Any vote for a no means that you condone and support this behavior of anti-Semitism, harassment, intimidating, and bullying.
Can I get a motion to remove Councilwoman Crowley as council president? I'll make that motion. Um, I'll make that motion. I, just to jump in, I, I understand the, they made the motion. Based on our reading of state law and the ordinance of Point Pleasant Beach, um, there really is no mechanism for a council to remove a council president. It's a one-year term that's elected at the reorganization meeting, and then obviously at the next reorganization meeting, the term ends, and they, uh, you elect a new one. So I think we could have a vote. And is there? I mean, is there a level of egregious behavior in which we could? That not public. that I could find in the in the statute. There really is not, I've not no mechanism <coughs> that we could find that that said there's you know a, a council could remove a council president. I'd like um, to see that in writing. So I think we should. I'm seconding this motion. Okay. Can, can we go through the motion and the voting, and then we could? Uh, yeah, I, I guess you could, but the, it, there's no, um, there there would be no, in my opinion, our legal opinion, there would be no legal enforcement of it. Uh, we well, don't believe it's we see that in something you could do. Wow. I'm seconding his vote. Mike Mike Ramos. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm not I'm not voting. I'm I'm abstaining from that. I'm not voting on that. So. Well, we'll do the we'll do the roll call. Councilman Ramos. Yes. Ab Councilman Tessa. Abstaining. I'm not until we see the information to what he said. So. Yep. Abstaining. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Burns. That's a, it's a no from me. Councilman Pasola. Mayor, you're doing an excellent job. I just want to say that. Thank My you. My vote is yes. My vote is no with a comment. I cannot believe that Mr. Pasola would have the audacity to second that motion. Let's not touch on personal things here. Wow. All I can say is wow. 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 You know, wow. Before, before, can I just That's say something? That's all I can say. Well, can we finish the roll call and then so I'll vote? So it was a no for me. Okay. It, due to the fact that it's a legal issue, you said, I will abstain. So we have... At the last council meeting, someone up here said, now we know whose team you're on in a real nasty way. Wow, what a horrible statement. I don't know who said it. Wow. <laughs> but I want you to know whose team I'm on. I'm on your team. Everybody out here. So my next motion, hold on, my next motion is to, I'm going to ask for a motion to remove Councilwoman Crowley for all of her uh, committee responsibilities. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I'm going to ask for is to censure Councilwoman Crowley. I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Councilman Ramos. Yes. Councilwoman Testa. No. Councilwoman Burns. No. Councilwoman Crowley. Absolutely not. Councilman Gant. No. Thank you, uh, Ms. Councilman Pasola. I apologize, uh, Councilman Pasola. Yes. Okay. That's the end of my report. Uh, Christine.
Um, I don't have a report tonight. I'm just back from vacation. I'll have one for the next meeting. Thank you. Welcome Thank back. You. you were missed. Eileen. Okay. We had one item added prior to tonight's meeting. That was item 3G. <coughs> we're going to remove item 1W uh, just because they're, um, they're not ready yet. And then we have two items that were added today, the curb cut, uh, approval of the curb cut extent, uh, exemption uh, in its current state was added as item 2E. And then 2F uh, is for the town hall meeting on April 23rd. Okay. We're going to open it up to first public participation. Just a few notes. Uh, when you come up, state your first name, last name, and address. Pay attention to my nice little clock and be respectful. You're limited to five minutes. And it's agenda items only. Dave? It's a new microphone. It's a new microphone, Dave. Is it on? Is this thing on? We can hear you. Okay. Is it on? practice going forward then uh, for Daniel's Law? Yeah, it's something I should look into because people okay. are doing that mm -hmm. now. Okay. okay. Uh, different towns. Are they, they're new? They're the seasonal. They're Public safety, seasonal. telecommunication, safety, uh, for seasonal, Season. right? They're only seasonal. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? I'm just going to check and make sure that the mic is on. Andy, I saw you first. Just give Eileen a second to check and make well, sure that. No, I, I saw George, but you go first.
report from your standing committee. Um, the other thing is, I might understand, I, I checked the, we the website. Is it correct that the three women, you're on the inspections, licensing, and building code committee, correct? Okay. My question for Councilwoman Crawley and Councilwoman Burns, do you still have unresolved you know, uh, violations with that department? Unresolved. Minor are they still the, are they still open? Minor going before the variance board, so it's not the public, the, the building department doesn't vote on the variance level. The violations started from that department, so I add, I'm just asking a question: Yes or no? Are they still open? Or are they unresolved? They're, they're not resolved, right? They're, they're, they're going before the board. They're not resolved, though. Simple question. If that's the case, from my experience being up there, the appearance of impropriety, you should not, two of you should not be on that committee or vote on anything regarding that until they're resolved, you know, temporarily be off there. That's from my experience being up there. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. And that's part of my, that's part of my conversation tomorrow with, with the DCA. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's next? Addressing anti Semitism. I, 
it's it, 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 it's mind boggling. I, I, I Christ was a joke. I've got nothing else. I'm I'm just out of my mind, angry, distraught. Christ was a Jew. Just know that we're, we're working on this, uh, myself and members of the council, some members of the council are working on this, so thank you. Okay, who else? First public, EJ? EJ yeah, okay. Geiger, 115 Arnold Avenue. I'm just gonna be quick, I think when it came back to everything going on with 1H, um, I've been coming to the meetings for a while, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, attorney, I think what should have happened with that was that should have been asked to be carved out and separated instead of being voted on during committee's reports. I think that would have been the proper word of that, would have been to say, I want to carve out 1H, set it up to it separately. That word was never used. Nobody mentioned it. That would have been the proper way to handle that. And then it could have been voted on consent re like the regular consent resolutions were voted on. Um, so I just want, you know, every, it seemed like nobody, it just seemed like everybody was yelling over everybody instead of doing the way it should have been handled. I apologize. So thank you. Thank you, EJ. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, hearing none, can I get a motion to close first public and adopt consent resolution one, two, and three? So moved. Second. Councilman Ramos? Yes. Councilman Testa? Yes. Councilwoman Burns? Yes. Councilman Pasola? Yes. Councilwoman Crowley? Yes. Councilman Gant? This is for one, two, and three? Yes. Uh, yes, I have to abstain on one C. And I'll abstain from everything on resolution three except three C. Sorry. So three A through three through A and B and three D to F. I'm sorry, D to G. You're voting yes on. I abstain from those. Yes on. Oh, okay. Yes on three C. Thank you. Sorry. <coughs> okay. I think we're good. Okay. Moving on to second public participation. Same thing. Na uh, full name address. Uh, be respectful, and this is anything you want to talk about, and this is a three-minute time limit.
to Antrim and moving the elementary kids to the high school and get rid of the tennis courts and making that nice little play area there. And the high school kids have what they need all over at Antrim. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. No, we have no, we have no say in that. that. Yeah. But Thankfully, that's. The superintendent did talk about trying yeah, to work with the UP that was. But their school board. Yeah, but that's school board, yeah. Really what you were yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just thought I would share that. Yeah. Um, Good. That thank, you. Thank, you, thank you, Kathy. Thank, thank you. you. Excuse me, one second. I just, um, in going back in my notes here, uh, the vote that was defeated uh, was four no's for Councilman, to remove uh, Councilwoman Crowley from her committee responsibilities. Um, I need to collect it to get your vote, uh, Councilman Casola. So, can I have your vote on that, just for the record? My vote was yes. Your vote was yes. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. Who else? Nobody else for second public. Larry. Larry Schwartz, St. Louis Avenue. So here's the bottom line: we still have a confirmed bigot on the council. And as long as that person remains on the council, this council has no credibility with any decent person in Point Pleasant Beach. Now she still claims, she still denies that she said what this police report unequivocally confirmed she said. And by refuting this report, she is denigrating the competence and integrity of the Point Pleasant Beach Police Department and the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. And that alone makes her unfit to serve on this council. Now she still insists that she's the target of this vast conspiracy, or in her words, a witch hunt. She hasn't done anything wrong. Oh no, she's the victim. And she still refuses to do what's morally <laughs> right and resign. Have you no sense of decency? Now she's guilty, it's proven she's guilty, but she's <clears throat> not the only one. Anyone who looks the other way at her actions, anyone who, who defends her, anyone who refuses to denounce her actions is also guilty. Next. John Bosch, North Avenue. Um, yeah, uh, Councilwoman Crowley, you are always saying that you're being bullied. Uh, you're, you are not being bullied. You are the bully. You, you have caused not one, but two families to move away from next door to you in less than three years. Uh, even intimidating a six year old for playing ball in his front yard. And this was even before the anti-Semitic uh, activities. <coughs> you are not being harassed. You are the harasser. You kicked major contributors, the treasurer, the secretary, and the prior co-chairperson off of the senior committee and members of the recreation committee in re retribution for them supporting independent banking political candidates and for having the guts to tell the truth about the deficiencies and inadequacies of the candidates you supported. You said it wasn't personal, but it was 100% personal. Since you kneecapped the senior committee, there has not been one agenda or meeting minutes posted. The, uh, the prior committee was 
told they had to have their agendas in advance. They had to post their uh, minutes in the, the next day or a couple of days after the meeting. But we haven't seen any of that. I'm glad the, I'm glad the luncheon went well. Um, but how come you're not, you don't have We just to approved our minutes last night. They need to be approved first. Um, haven't seen an agenda. Okay. Um, I guess the administrative requirements opposed on the prior committee don't apply to Ms. Burns and Mr. Crowley, um, as, as well as parking laws, building ordinances, and rental requirements that you two apparently don't have to abide by. Uh, I guess you, know, you use intimidation and retribution to force people <coughs> to push, push through the puppet agenda established by our previous mayor. It is not the current mayor who's trying to seize the power of the council majority. It is you who have been using the power of the majority to push the, the, your puppet majority to push through agenda items. That the citizens of Point Pleasant Beach neither want nor need. And this lastly, uh, on another note, um, could you tell us what the status is of the federal grant you got to raise your house at? The uh, proposal gives 167,000 federal grant. Well, I'll give you a status if you'd like to know. I mean, you saw the paperwork, so no, the state no. has it, and it's still there being held. So when I do lift my house, when my son goes to college and I want to lift it, I can lift it. Wasn't that supposed to be done? In a no, there is no window. Obviously, yeah. if you were a Sandy survivor, you know what I went through. You're actually my neighbor for 25 years, yeah, right. and I get along with all my neighbors. So it's weird that you can <laughs> say I ran, that I ran away two neighbors when you've known me for 25 yeah, I've years. Seen, I've seen so, right, of course you did, right? Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Who's next? Wow. Dave? I would just like right. to say, uh, Mayor, 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 I would like to say that if everyone is going to come up here and say that we need to be held to a certain decorum, I'm asking the residents to also do that. I don't appreciate... You don't have to, you can agree what they're saying, but the laughter and everything is very disrespectful. Honestly, it really is. It's not becoming. Every time someone says something, you laugh. You're, you're talking about being moral, but you're laughing every single time. That's not very mature. So I'm asking you kindly, if you don't like what they're saying, go up to Councilman Crowley afterwards and speak your piece, okay? Because, excuse me, I'm speaking. Thank you. Yeah, Dave. Dave Cavanaro, when I came to Parkway, there was a little quick lunch. I don't think this is working. <laughs> <laughs> and it's brand new, so we'll look into that right now. You know, nobody else is commenting, and I'm sitting over there, and I am old, and I'm partially deaf. And I still don't okay, it. thank you, Dave. Thank you. Who's next? Going once, going twice. Can I get a motion to adjourn? And close public. And close public, sorry. All motion. Check. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right.